Hey folks, Dr. Alex Harrison here with Alacrity Endurance. Today we're going to talk about how much carbohydrate you need during endurance training. We will cover big picture constraints, gut limits during cycling, gut limits during running, rowing, and swimming, and specific recommendations at the end. Big picture constraints that drive our thinking about how much carbohydrate to intake during training are your physiological needs. Your physiological needs are determined by whatever it takes to keep blood sugar elevated during training. So your muscles are burning carbs, liver is outputting carbs, but in general, your liver can't keep up with the burn rate of your muscles. And so you have to intake carbs to meet those needs. Second, you have to intake carbs, period, because you have to offset glycogen loss that happens during training whether you supplement carbs during training or not, meet your overall daily kilocalorie needs, and you need to do it all with enjoyable satiety. So if performance isn't absolutely critical, it's ideal to consume slightly less carbohydrate during training just so that you can have more solid food outside of training and meet your kcal needs. Generally, if endurance performance is important to you, you should try to outconsume your carbohydrate burn. That's not possible, and we're going to see why in a second, but you should try. And here's why it's not possible. You have gut limits. Your stomach and your small intestines can't absorb carbohydrate as fast as you can burn it. For a long time, we thought those gut limits were right around 90 grams of carbs per hour. Back in like the early 2000s, we got this dogma beat into our brains that it was 60 grams of glucose, 30 grams of fructose. The fact is that's not really true, and 90 grams per hour really isn't the upper limit. I regularly do 120 grams per hour and it feels great. I'm a big guy, you say? Like I'm 210 pounds, okay, fine. My wife weighs 140 pounds and does the same thing. Gut limits tend to be reduced with high intensity exercise. Your stomach essentially starts to lose a little bit of the necessary blood flow to be able to absorb carbohydrates at such a high rate. And your gut limits depend on what type of training you're doing. If you're like an enthusiast cyclist, you may have heard that 100 grams of carbs per hour is becoming a new norm in your discipline, but there's lots of triathletes out there that have been doing like 110 to 130 grams of carbs per hour for like 10 hours straight in an Ironman for a long time. But how that never made it to the scientific literature, I'm not sure. Actually, I know exactly how. College kids are the general subject pool for scientific research. College kids generally aren't very good at Ironman and super aren't very good at knowing what nutrition strategies to employ to be good at Ironman. Let's talk about how much carbohydrate you should actually have in each training session. If your ideal intake is less than your current gut limit, then your target intake should be greater than or equal to your ideal intake. So for example, if you're only burning, say, 70 grams of carbs per hour in your muscles, more than your liver can supply through gluconeogenesis and glycogenolysis, that's when I would recommend consuming that 70 grams of carbs per hour, or maybe even a little bit more. And the reason I say more is because you can sort of pre-stock your blood sugar, pre-elevate your blood sugar, pre-stock your gut early on in a training session or a race for those times during the race when you become a little bit less hydrated. Essentially, just start with a little higher blood sugar, which is advantageous in endurance Board. Second, if your ideal intake is greater than your gut limits, then your target intake is your gut limit. So that's when you just have to ask, what can my gut handle? Chances are this is most races for virtually everybody, and this is most training sessions for probably anybody who's watching this video, because most of us can burn more energy per hour than our gut can tolerate. Let's talk gut limits during cycling specifically. Generally, 60 to 80 grams of glucose could be consumed if you only consumed glucose. So that's like if you buy just dextrose or just maltodextrin, those are just glucose. We'll get into that in another video. All of these gut limits are going to be assuming you're well hydrated and that you're not operating at like VO2 max or aerobic exercise intensities. 30 grams per hour of fructose in isolation is a pretty firm limit for most people. But the good news is that when you combine the two of them, you can actually consume a greater amount of fructose without causing GI distress for some reason because uh, when it's paired with glucose, your stomach and intestines just respond a little bit more amenably to it. So in total, you can consume 100 to 150 grams of carbs per hour as long as you have your glucose and fructose uh, composition managed. You just train the process of doing it so you get good at managing your hydration and sodium intake. The reason I believe that so many people believe that they can't consume even 90 grams of carbs per hour is because they're totally botching their hydration strategy. All right, let's talk gut limits in running, rowing, and swimming. And for all intents and purposes, they're pretty similar. And you'll notice here that the numbers are roughly like 10 to 20% lower than what might be found in cycling. I would say there's a much wider gut variability in running than there is in cycling. Virtually nobody am I unable to coach up to 
100 grams per hour carbohydrate intake during cycling. I even have folks who can manage to get hypoglycemic during cycling at 100 grams of carbs per hour and they need 120 grams of carbs per hour to optimally fuel. That is not the case in running. And in running, it's really important to figure out where your upper limit is, push your intake right up to that point because you're just so likely to end up getting hypoglycemic if you don't manage it really, really well. So that leaves us at 90 to 135 grams of carbs uh, total. And that's of course with an optimal glucose and fructose composition. So here is my fan dangled uh, carbohydrate table that you may have seen online somewhere floating around a forum, or if you've read my book, it's in there. I do have this one little update here because I've just been so convinced that super high carbohydrate intake rates are beneficial, totally possible out much beyond six hours, 10 hours, 12 hours, as long as you manage your hydration well. When the duration of your workout is short, the hourly intra-workout carbohydrate recommendations are quite low. And the reason for that is your pre-workout meal serves to elevate your blood sugar for a very short workout. So it's, I mean, you really don't need very much carbohydrate at all. And the only reason I recommend some is just to absolutely guarantee that there's not any drop in blood sugar towards the tail end of 30 minute training session or like a 10K race. So you'll notice that as the workouts get longer, the hourly rate of carbohydrate consumption gets higher. So these are not total carbohydrate intake recommendations for these durations of training. This is hourly rate. I'm absolutely convinced that virtually everybody can benefit from greater than 100 grams of carbs per hour for optimal performance out longer than six hours. So if you are doing a half Ironman, I would consider targeting 100 grams of carbs per hour as long as you maintain your hydration status. 75 grams of carbs per hour is a great bet for like when you're getting dehydrated towards the end of the event. But yeah, play with like 120, 130 grams of carbs per hour. Make sure you're doing like close to a one-to-one -one glucose fructose ratio, maybe one to 0.8. Let us know in the comments how it goes. And finally, one of the most common questions I get is why why in this like two and a half to three to six hour range is there such a, a high carbohydrate recommendation but a little bit less for the longer duration training sessions and races and it boils down to hydration it's pretty easy to stay appropriately hydrated when you are only doing an activity for two and a half hours assuming you're not in extremely hot or humid conditions let's say you're doing a marathon if you're in relatively cool conditions when you're well hydrated your gut is much more tolerant of very high carbohydrate intake so you might be asking why so many companies still report 60 to 90 grams of carbs per hour that's like their hallmark recommendation for anything over three hours, oh, 60 to 90 grams of carbs per hour, 60 to 90, like as in you're gonna have optimal performance with 60 grams of carbs per hour. I wonder that too. I couldn't figure it out because they could sell more carbohydrate if they would just recommend 100 grams of carbs per hour. But the number one way these companies lose customers is because they get GI distress from their product because they mismanage their hydration. When you mismanage your hydration, you'll get GI distress from 60 grams of carbs per hour, no problem. When these companies market 60 to 90 grams of carbs per hour, which came from research in the very early 2000s. When that was first reported, I'm sure that companies sort of latched onto it and were like, let's do 90 grams of carbs per hour. And then all of a sudden your customers are jumping ship because your customers are consuming 90 grams of carbs per hour with like just under a pint of water per hour. And yeah, you'll have gut distress if you do that. And maybe you're familiar with the search for like the right product that works for your gut. There's like this revolving door of supplements uh, that everybody goes through as they're like trying to figure out the trial and error process to find the right supplement that works for them. There's very little trial and error in a well-designed process for fueling because we know what works uh, as far as the literature goes and there's a lot less inter-individual variability than what people will tell you like, oh, that product doesn't work for me. It's like, no, that product could work fine for you if you just had a little bit more salt and uh, drank a whole bunch more water or didn't wait to consume anything for two hours into your ride. If you are a company and your product causes gut distress for somebody and they like have a really bad race because they had gut cramps halfway through, they're never gonna use your product again and they're gonna tell all their friends, oh, that gave me gut cramps. And then all their friends are gonna be really resistant to buying your product. So it's the safe bet as a company to say, 60 to 90 grams of carbs per hour, but there are performance gains on the table if you can manage 100 grams of carbs or 120 grams of carbs per hour just by managing your hydration better. A lot of companies recommend that lower amount is there's like this sugar villainization that has happened where 
folks say, oh, that's so much sugar, that must be bad for you, and it's just not. During exercise, your physiology is entirely different than outside of exercise. Your muscle cells are like a hundredfold more receptive to blood glucose. So when I tell a lot of people like, yeah, you should drink 100 grams of sugar, that's half a cup of sugar per hour uh, for the next five hours while you do your half Ironman, they're like, oh man, that's gotta be bad for you. No, it's actually not. It just goes straight to your muscles. Like, that's all it does. Gives you good fuel. Uh, your blood sugar doesn't stay elevated. You don't get increased inflammation as long as you just do it when you exercise. There's only a couple of companies that are recommending like close to 100 grams of carbs per hour. And I think it's like Morton, SIS, Science and Sport. So a lot of the more mainstream, not like ultra performance oriented companies like Morton and Science and Sport don't recommend it. They just don't want to lose customers, I think. But you can use their products to get to 100 grams or 130 grams of carbs per hour and have really great performance. Uh, you just have to stay hydrated. Thank you.